there, I'm the Cozy Platypus and I love stories. Writing them, reading them, watching them, playing them, you name it, I love it. But enough about me. Welcome to my channel. How are you doing today? Well, in that case, I have just the thing to cheer you up because today we are playing day one of Stardew Valley. So grab a cozy blanket and a warm drink of your choice and let's play. So today we are starting off our farm with Sage. She loves all things herby and planty, and she has a special soft spot for animals. I wouldn't call her the bubbly type, but more reserved. She loves the idea of spending hours and hours alone on her farm with no one bugging her. I don't know about you, but I think I can relate to that sentiment just a little bit. And of course we have to try the Meadowlands farm because that is the new farm type for the new 1.6 update for Stardew Valley. I love the fact that you start out with chickens in this uh, file. It is so helpful. It usually takes me a while to get to the point of being able to buy a chicken coop. So being able to start out with chickens and having eggs every day at the start of like day three or somewhere around there is just helpful early game to get some cash that comes in daily instead of having to wait for your crops to grow. I also really love to play with the artesian products, so this is super ideal for me and my uh, gameplay style. I love the new blush accessory, so I have to put that on, of course. And I'm trying to decide what animal I want to choose for this save. As you can see, there's a lot of choices that are not base game. These are two mods called cuter cats and cuter dogs and they give you just some more options in game the little pixel versions of these animals are a lot cuter i also have ones installed for the barn animals and the coop animals and i don't know it just makes me happier to play with them so we're gonna do the meadowlands farm her name is sage chicory farm and we are gonna get started and for my very special granddaughter I want you to have this sealed envelope. No, no, don't open it yet. Have patience. Now, listen close. There will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life, and your bright spirit will fade before a growing emptiness. When that happens, my dear, you'll be ready for this gift. Now let Grandpa rest. This dude is so creepy. I have to, every time I watch this cutscene, the little tongue, like what is he doing? Why is his tongue out? Also the skeleton dude in the corner, like mood, honestly. Dear Sage, if you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened to me long ago. I lost sight of what mattered most in life real connections with other people in nature, so I dropped everything and moved to the place I truly belong. I've enclosed the deed to that place, my pride and joy, Chicory Farm. It's located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. This was my most precious gift of all, and now it's yours. I know you'll honor the family name, my dear. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. P.S. If Lewis is still alive, say hi to the old guy for me, will ya? the way, it always weirds me out that she drives here in the bus and then the bus is broken right after. How did she get here on the bus if the bus is broken? But that's beside the point. This is Chicory Farm. Sure, it's a bit overgrown, but there's some good soil underneath that mess. With a little dedication, you'll have it cleaned up in no time. Ah, oh, the new farmer. Welcome, I'm Lewis, mayor of Pelican Town. Yes, we know who you are, Lewis. You know everyone's been asking about you. It's not every day that someone new moves in. It's quite a big deal. So, you're moving into your grandfather's old cottage. It's a good house. Very rustic. It's beautiful. We love our house. Anyway, you must be tired from the long journey. You should get some rest. Tomorrow, you ought to explore the town a bit and introduce yourself. The townspeople would appreciate that. Alright, let's get started. And of course, with this farm type, we start out with hay instead of seeds, which is sad. Yeah, as you can see, I have 74 people to be greeted, and that is because I play with mods. I play with Stardew Valley Expanded, East Scarp, and Ridgeside Village, so 
all together, that is a lot of NPCs and it usually takes me forever to get through all of them. Now, full disclosure, I've played the update a little bit. Um, I've, I've started several saves because I could not decide what to do and what farm type to do and whether or not I wanted to have mods on the first run through and I tried to play without mods and then realized that my poor little ADHD brain just could not do it. So then I had to reinstall mods and then they broke so I had to restart saves because it broke my save file. It's been a little bit of a mess so I'm excited to be able to just, you know, settle down, pick one farm, and just go with it. So I learned this trick from watching little Simsy play Stardew the other day. She said if you put a uh, wood fence in the middle of where your grass is growing, the grass will regrow from that block that the fence is on, and you don't have to worry about having to um, restart your grass for your coop animals. All right, we have to look at our names. Anne and Potpourri. Those are some interesting names. I don't know. Potpourri is kind of cute. Anne is simple, but dignified. But I don't know, I would kind of like to have like a herb theme or a plant theme for the names of my animals and stuff, so I might change that later. I might keep it. We'll see. Alright, I like to clear out this area just in case my chickens are out overnight, and then it just makes it a little bit easier when I have to come in and uh, pet them in the morning. That way I don't have to get stuck on a bunch of weeds and stuff in here. I know I'm spending very limited energy. I don't have much of it early game, of course, and this is day one, but hey, we're getting some mixed seeds out of the deal, so I call that a win. So you see where the uh, water is over here, and I've discovered after playing with this farm type a little bit that this area for planting crops is just a little bit too far away from the water source. So I think I'm going to start off planting my crops down here by this little pond. It just makes it a whole lot easier to water our crops in the morning when we have the starter watering can. And we're gonna cut down some trees because we gotta have a chest, okay? We gotta have a place to store our stuff because we have no storage space. Now, full disclosure, as I mentioned, I play with a lot of mods, and part of why I do that is because I do have ADHD, and if I didn't, uh, I think that I would spend my entire day running back and forth from chest to place that I have to go to that day when I'm running errands because I inevitably forget what I was supposed to bring, and I would have no time to actually play the game. I have one specifically that's kind of like the most cheaty mod that I probably own, and that is uh, chests everywhere. So I can open my chests from any location, and that just saves me from having to wander back and forth when I have inevitably, again, forgotten to grab that one thing that I was going to bring to Clint or the museum or whatever it may be. All right, now let's go get ourselves some seeds so we can get started. Oop, cutscene. Sheesh, Linny, not too loud now. What if someone heard you? They might find out about me and... Chill, Lulu, no one cares. Anyways, I gotta go. Still got lots of paperwork left. Real nice of you to saddle me with all that, by the way. Stop calling me that. And it's your own fault for procrastinating all the time. No can do, Lulu. It's my right as your big sister. Anyways, gotta go. Gotta catch the cable car before it fills up. Take care now. Sage? Oh, er, nice seeing you. So, how much of that did you hear? Ugh, Lenny. So, uh, Lenny is the mayor of Ridgeside Village, which is the mod I was talking about, and they have a lot of villagers up there, so we will definitely have to visit sometime soon. Ooh, I see some forageables. Yeah. And of course, daffodils are fantastic gifts early game, so I tend to not sell those because I just would rather gift them and kind of build some relationships. Why hello and welcome to our little community, dear. You can call me Granny if you like. I love Granny, just for the record. She's great. Every village needs a nice little old lady. Oh, and it looks like our bookseller days are the 11th and the 22nd. The last couple farms that I've started uh, had the bookseller days on the 12th. 
Hello, it's nice to meet you. You picked a good time to move here. The spring is lovely. I love Leah, and I want to be her friend, so I'm giving her a gift straight away. Oh, hey, you're new here, aren't you? The name's Sterling. I moved here not too long ago myself. Maybe it'll give us something to talk about over some beers. First one's on me, all right? That's Sterling. He's from East Scarp. Let's get some seeds. Uh, I think I'm going to start off with a single seed for the bean starter, cauliflower seeds, potato seeds, and then the rest of my money is going to go to parsnips. That way we're growing the seeds for the community center as soon as possible so we can get at least that part of the community center turned in and uh, our first reward and everything and get the community center started. Of course we can't turn anything in yet because it's not open yet, but we can start setting things aside in our chests. And we gotta hit our trash cans, of course, because we need our garbage hat. I'm pretty sure since the update that Concerned Ape tweaked the drop rate for the garbage hat because a lot of people have been getting it really early game and in my last attempted save <laughs> uh i did get it at like the, the fourth or fifth day so uh, we should be able to find it somewhat soon and now that we've met harvey and vincent we're gonna go back home and we're gonna plant those seeds so we can get started on getting some money and i think i'm gonna plant right here right along the water's edge just to save me some time in the morning I tend to plant a lot of crops early game, um, the cheaper the better, just so that I can get started, and uh, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. I usually spend like half of my day watering my crops, so the closer to the water we can get, the better. I also like to plant my bean starter as close as possible to the edge as I can, uh, because it's just annoying because you can't walk through it. And I also like to water my crops in this pattern, like stand in the middle of a square and do the edges first. That way, I found that I, if I don't do that, I end up watering the ground a lot because I'm not standing, standing in the right spot. I can't reach where I thought I could reach and it just gets really annoying really quickly. So I uh, tend to water in this formation, especially when I have the early game watering can. And you might also notice that I have like pop-up labels for all of my crops. Uh, that is also a mod because even if I planted in an organized way, I would not remember where I planted my crops and what crops were which crops and how long they had to go because I'm not going to be able to keep all of that in my brain all together. So I have a mod that labels it. It's just really helpful for me. I like to call them quality of life mods. And I think we're going to go up and see if we can find some forageables. We need one of each of them. We need a leek, a horseradish, here's a horseradish, a dandelion, and a daffodil. Here's our leek. Awesome. And of course we ate our other dandelion, so we'll have to find one of those. Uh, but that's all we need for the spring forageable bundle in the community center So we will set those aside and we won't mess with them so that we can get moving on the community center And I have to talk to Linus because he's extremely good to know early game He gives you the sashimi recipe and that can come in really useful because it's very easy to make Also, Demetrius is a must because you have to have a relationship with him before you can have anything in your cave he doesn't like daffodils, so we're not going to give him a daffodil. Everybody loves Sebastian. I have not married Sebastian yet, to be honest. I've married Sterling from Always Raining in the Valley, and the first person that I ever married was Abigail, and I love her. This is Sterling's cutscene. His first cutscene right after you meet him, before you even have a heart event. And we learn that he has a drinking problem, unfortunately. Sup, Sage? Sorry about that. <laughs> I might have had a few too many. Yeah, I think so, Sterling. Shane and I were playing a drinking game while watching Clint. He doesn't exactly like being done up. Maybe you should play with us one of these nights. We'll cash in those drinks I owe you. It won't leave you wanting. And I always mark this one. I don't know. I don't like getting that drunk because I don't really like to drink. Could you not tell Gus about that mess? Thanks, Farmer. Yeah, uh, Sterling is one of my favorites. I love the fact that he has so many uh, cutscenes. He has this cutscene for every single heart that you gain and some even have a couple for each heart it just gives you a lot more story to it i cannot wait for them to finish the mod that they're creating 
in Always Raining in the Valley. I know they are also going to add the other two characters that are in that specific mod are not like friendable. They're just like passive NPCs. Uh, but in a future update for the mod, the plan is that those characters will become friendable and romanceable as well. I think they're going to add a romance option for Mia, which is, I don't know, Sterling's friend, I guess? Uh, I'm not sure the exact relationships. But yeah, that's one of the best NPC-specific mods, I think, that I've found. And I really love having them. Sterling works in the general store, so you get to see him a lot and i'm gonna go check the beach now i think for some shells and see if there's any spots to dig up so if maybe if we find some spots to dig up we could get some carrots and i'm gonna save one of each of these two because we need them for the uh shellfish bundle i think it's called in the community center part of the fish section which i don't know about you but i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one that really doesn't like fishing and it's not just in Stardew, honestly. I don't like fishing in any game. I love, like, Animal Crossing, uh, Coral Island. They both have fishing mechanics. And they also have insect catching mechanics. And I have found that I really prefer catching insects over fishing. Uh, because I can actually see what I'm catching. For some reason in my mind, that is really important. It's more exciting. You just kind of have to like stare at the water when you're fishing and there's some kind of mini game and it usually sucks and it's just really annoying. Coral Islands is not bad. I think that's the best one that I've found. Sunhaven, is, which is also a, a farming game or of like a fantasy farming game. They have a farming mechanic two and it's it's not bad but i think coral islands is the best all right well i guess our day is about over we already have everything for the community center spring crops planted we have all of the forageables for the spring forageables bundle we have got a pretty good start and we even have some shells for the shellfish bundle thank you so much for watching this video i had a blast and i hope you had fun as well i will definitely be posting more of sage's journey very soon and if you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel i plan on uploading a whole lot of cozy gaming content both stardew i have some sims videos already and maybe in the future even some more different games that we're going to try out together but until then i hope you have an awesome day